Get more from your store with Acme's new Fresh Pass program and enjoy more services like unlimited free delivery on all of your grocery needs. More exclusive perks like 5% off every day on your favorite O organic or open nature items across the stores and more rewards that never expire. Get Acme's Fresh Pass to exclusive perks, unlimited free delivery, and more. Start your 30-day free trial today. Visit acmemarkets.com slash Fresh Pass for program details. Service available in select areas. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am Jamila Lari of My Biz Consulting, and today we are here with an exclusive interview talking a little bit about a trending question that I constantly get at My Biz Consulting. Um, five big reasons you need a trademark right now. Super important totally understand, but I can't answer all of your questions. So here we are with the podcast and our consultant live on the line where we can answer these questions for you. I hope this helps. Feel free to give us a call. We will be on the line and I'll also be pulling up a chat. You can give us a call directly at 914-205-5389 if you have any questions during this segment. Right now, I'm not going to waste too much time. We got about an hour, and we want to get right to it. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on the line Brian Wood. Brian Wood is our consultant, our trademark consultant, who will be able to answer questions simply like, uh, do you need a trademark for your business? What is a trademark anyway, and why do I need it? So again, I'm going to go ahead and bring Brian on the line and let him do the rest of the talking. I'll interject a little bit, but again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to give us a call, 914-205-5389, and I'd be more than happy to bring you on the line and ask, ask your question. Let's go ahead and bring Brian on. Good morning, Brian. How are you today? Good morning, Jamila. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm Absolutely. happy to be here. Absolutely. Great to have you. So, I, like I said, this is a great conversation. We're super happy to have you on the show. Um, and we want to really just kind of jump in. Again, like I mentioned to you, we're getting a lot of trending questions about uh, trademarks, you know, and I wanted to start with yeah. maybe an introduction, um, you know, a little bit about, you know, your experience and really what what is a trademark? Because I think that's you know, new business owners get into and just don't have the answers to. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a great place to start. So our company's been around for 19 years. I've been personally with the company for years this week, believe it or not, it's my anniversary. So I'm oh, happy uh, anniversary. Very, yeah. Thank you so much. And so the, so really the misconception in terms of what a trademark is and what it does for people, if it's necessary, is, is certainly comes up on our end as well. And so, yeah, uh, as far as a trademark and what it is, what can be trademarked? Uh, a word trademark is certainly something that people do pursue. A uh, word trademark can encompass, whether it be uh, the name of a product, the, the name of the company itself, uh, which I'll certainly expand upon for, you know, later in the, the call here. And then also uh, a design mark, which, uh, could actually have words or verbiage in it, right? Uh, the same mm -hmm. words or verbiage that a person may trademark just for the name of the company or the product as well. So those mm -hmm. actually uh, do different things in terms of brand protection. And most of our customers, I would say over 90% have both a word and a design or a logo trademark. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And so that makes it very comprehensive, I know, but also uh, people do trademark a slogan or a tagline, right? Uh, like right. Nike's Just Do It, for example. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the big trademarks <laughs> that a lot of right. people are kind of talking about right now when it comes down to trademark. Absolutely. And so the, I think to answer uh, some of the questions that we have here, does a small business need a trademark? Uh, absolutely. If they're going to be doing business uh, nation, nationwide or perhaps globally, which as we both would agree, it's a global 
uh, economy and marketplace anymore, right? So, yes. so that's why it's important to protect your brand outside of your own, uh, you know, city or state. And being, you know, and we have a lot of Amazon e-commerce uh, people that we do help and help them trademark their their brand. And actually, it's required for for uh, Amazon as well. So that oh, wow. makes it another, uh, you know, important reason to do so. Now, the, the USPTO, just as an interesting note, they uh, are running a little bit behind because they're so busy these days, right. uh, you know, and people have really begun to start their own businesses. Um, even since uh, the beginning of 2020, when things started shutting down, people, the economy started growing on the uh, small business front with people starting yes. their own businesses. So that's great to see. And Absolutely. we're certainly able to help them expand and protect their businesses in that way. Uh, the, you know, the one thing people don't necessarily want to have happen, getting back to the name of the company, is, a, you know, a, a trademark protects their name in a certain space, right? And so whether right. it be electronics or apparel or uh, a, perhaps even a podcast as we're on right now, so right. those are the uh, the ways that we can help a person protect it. And, you you know, you don't necessarily want somebody to, what I say, muddying up your brand, uh, you know, in another state, for example. So that's why somebody mm. would go ahead and protect the name of their company as well as perhaps their product or service. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes total sense. Now, when we, we talk about branding, um, and, you know, like I, I mentioned before, I know a lot of uh, musicians, and this has become really big in that community where we get, you know, they want to trademark their their name um, because their name usually turns into a brand from there. How, you know, what, could you sure. get a little more into how that works for musicians? Absolutely. And, and that's a great niche. Uh, we do help people. Uh, protect whether they're perhaps just a musical artist and they could be doing they could be doing live uh, live uh, you know performances or perhaps they could be doing uh, you know rec downloadable recordings which is another mm -hmm. uh, thing that we pro help people protect with uh, uh, as far as artists they could be a producer as well right so that's yet right. another way that we're able to help them protect um, their brand in that space. So uh, there's a few different ways we can help. Uh, the USPTO is a bit, um, you know, those can be a bit tricky sometimes because they're looking for not necessarily just a one song, but perhaps an album or a, a longevity. But, right. you, know, that, you know, those are things that we could certainly help people, you know, start carving out a niche and protecting their brand and a lot of monikers, right? When, when an artist has a name that they, they sing uh, and people know them by, right. And that's right. important right. to protect that moniker. So we can certainly okay. help them. There. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I think that's important. Even the verbiage of uh, protecting your moniker. I think that's something that a lot of artists aren't familiar with. They don't usually hear. So they don't even know where to start when it comes down to looking for, you know, getting their name protected. You know, um, another need right. that I wanted to tap into while I have you, <laughs> while I have your attention here is the clothing industry. A lot of um, people are now launching their own clothing brand. And I wanted to just kind of touch on how important it is for that logo, even um, if we can talk a little bit more uh, in depth about the changing of the logo. So it may just be the name itself, but then the actual physical logo of it. And, you know, they kind of print both on like T-shirts, things like that. How would that work? Sure. And and, and actually, uh, Jamila, this is actually one of the, the biggest categories for us in EOR would be the apparel category and that could be hats hoodies you know uh t-shirts mm -hmm. the whole nine yards even down to footwear believe it or not so we can help people protect that logo which is you know considered to be the face of the company and right. then the the uh word as well which may be used independently of of the design and so that's why some people would trademark both uh and the you know with that design, sometimes they, they may actually have it where they want it to be in different colors, right? So we can help right. them do that 
two versus just being locked into one color scheme. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's one of the, the issues that a lot of um, new clothing, clothing designers are facing when it comes down to, you know, um, I want to do different colors. I don't just want to stick to this. Just how to go about it. You know, do I have to copyright or um, trademark every single one? So it's a lot, uh, a lot of questions that a lot of people have out mm-hmm. here when it comes down to that. Right. So, and we do, and we do, I'm sorry, we do actually copyright items as well, which we could perhaps have another podcast just dealing with that. Absolutely. We will revisit that soon. Absolutely. Yeah. And, but, but you do raise a good point that copyrights can protect just the design, but wouldn't protect it in that space. So it's a little bit bit different, but uh, we can certainly help there as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I wanted to jump into, you know, you mentioned protecting your brand. So, you know, what I face when I'm dealing with clients um, is is another tough question for me to, you know, really answer. So when we say protect your brand, where, you know, what does that mean to someone who just found out that they need a trademark or what a trademark really is? What does it mean when we say protect your brand? Sure. And so the, probably the People do trademark uh, their brand at different stages of the process. We do get people that trademark it before they've even put it out there. And that's, that's I would say that's the, a majority of the people. And that's probably the smartest, right? Because you don't necessarily want to put it out there unprotected either. Right. But we do get people that, that say, oh, you know, after a year or two, I'm starting to pick up some momentum and doing well for myself. And that's when when other companies notice that and tend to pick off your brand sometimes, right? So you certainly want to move on that and get in there before somebody else does. Uh, that would be, um, you know, important since it takes about a year to get a trademark up to a year to get wow. the process started as uh, yesterday would probably be wise to do. And, you know, once a, a common question that we actually get is, can I start using the trademark once I've filed and you get a serial number, which we can actually do for the uh, customer within a few days, believe it or not. And so, yes, you can. You can, even if it's intent to use, we can actually file that trademark, get that serial number, and they can start establishing use even at that point, which you know would have to be shown or proven eventually anyhow. Right, right, right. And I think that that would be be helpful for a lot of uh, business owners who are just getting started, who really know, (laughs) you know, I'm ready to put my stuff out, but I want to make sure that I'm protected in the long run. So uh, my next question, you know, um, so we say, okay, it helps your your brand succeed. Now, uh, you know, and I know from my standpoint here, you know, it's about branding and marketing. That's what I do. And this is where, you know, why you and I kind of connected here, but could you talk a little bit about how a trademark will help a brand actually succeed? Sure. Well, and I think that, you know, we're going to perhaps bridge a couple questions here, but uh, let's go mm-hmm. ahead. Let's, we, we sometimes have people in either the CBD space, uh, which is popular anymore, yeah. or the, uh, let's say cosmetics, right? So starting a cosmetic line or CBD, that's very popular as well as the apparel that we mentioned. And the, a lot of times with packaging, so if a person has the item made, the the CBD product, or it could be a cream or a salve or, or oil, right? They need some packaging. So a lot of times these companies that do the packaging for them would require a, a, a deposit of sometimes four or five thousand dollars you're not going to just be able to place an order for you know a, a grand right right so that's right. sometimes very costly up front so that's why it would be important to know that you can actually have that trademark or use that brand before you put that kind of money out there right. and so right. that we've seen the opposite we've seen people that have already gone down that road without, you know, securing uh, their brand first, and then sorry, Mm. as a result later, you know, and so that's always something we like to catch it earlier as opposed to later. I I think that one other thing that we we didn't mention is that sometimes people um, 
tend to get their LLC or business formation before the trademark. We yes. can, what I wanted to say here is that we can actually run a comprehensive search, which our searches are, are phenomenal. Uh, and so uh, we can run that search and pursue the trademark even before that point. Because if they get the, the LLC and then can't get the trademark, again, you're kind of working against yourself or, or taking one step forward and two steps back, right? Right, so, right. So that's the kind of thing that we can help people with initially. Sometimes that's the, a great place to start. Absolutely. Absolutely. Getting started, yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's definitely great information and good to know. <laughs> so another thing um, – you know, we have, I'm going to say this is a combined question. Um, when we talk, we talked a little bit about protection. We talked about the brand. Um, and I know we, we don't, I don't want to jump in getting into too many legal things and protections, but, you know, just if we can just kind of mosey on over that conversation just a tad bit to, you know, I think a lot of people also don't understand the legal protection that they have once they have a trademark. So if we can, I know that would be more one-on-one -on -one with them, but, you know, how does it legally protect a, a company or, you know, a brand? How would a trademark work for them? Of course. So the, you know, once it's registered, which does, is a process, as we know, uh, that's, when they can actually um, enforce their trademark and, you know, perhaps get others for infringement. What we can do uh, is we do in our, some popular packages that we have is a website takedown. If, if an individual mm -hmm. or a customer notices that their trademark wants to register, that is, it is using their trademark in the same space and in that way online, then we can, we can provide them with that service as far as a website takedown or social media takedown, which may be something on say Instagram or, or what have you, right? So that's another way we can help customers enforce uh, their brands because then at the end of the day, a person might ask themselves, why do I need to trademark in the first place if I cannot enforce it, right? And so that's right, protecting exactly. one's brand. And that's something that we do all the time uh, for individuals, uh, but yeah, you, you need to be um, registered first in order for us to be able to do that. So that's why it's important to get started <laughs> as soon as possible. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I think that you know um, having that brand even on the on the side of marketing, um, you know, just putting it out there as you mentioned, um, social media networks. Again, we, we also have websites where a lot of people don't realize this, this is something that should be included um, to, with your website. If you're getting a website built, you should include this, um, your copyrights. We need to know, make sure that <laughs> your information is all, you know, set and clear when it comes down to building that website up and things like that. So that's a huge, huge topic, um, you know, that I discuss with my clients when they come in. This is why it's important to get you, you know, get all of your your ducks in a row before launching your business. Um, exactly. Brian, can I ask in you to kind of just talk a little bit about the um, just lightly? <laughs> I know, like I'm going to dig in here, but just process. I think um, you know people kind of do a lot of research now that we have. We're in a Google world where people can kind of look for information on their own. And um, what, what have you ran into in, in scopes of um, people trying to get started and do this themselves, but, you know, kind of running into that brick wall? Excellent question. Excellent. So we do help quite a few people uh, from not only other companies or, or even filing themselves, you know, down the road, we can help them. What sets us apart uh, from other companies out there or even an individual trying it themselves is that we, we have a proprietary software. We're not a law firm, mind you, but we can, we can do uh, a lot of important things because we use proprietary software. Now, the, the software actually informs uh, a customer in real time if there's an office action response, some additional information that's required if you will, and they will be notified via email. And we'll mm -hmm. also call them on the phone. A representative from our company will be calling them in order to discuss what's needed and how we can help them overcome that. 
And we see a lot of people perhaps with even the same recurring issues in their trademark application that have filed it themselves, getting back to your point, mm -hmm. uh, that we can help them with and help them resolve. So those issues could be a bit minor, like procedural issues, or perhaps a bit more complicated, like a substantive issue, which may be a potentially blocking mark or merely descriptive or something along those lines. But we can help with all those things using our proprietary software that awesome. can, yeah, and actually is a, a, a fraction of the cost of what an IP attorney would charge them. Uh, wow. Because, yeah, and, and really that's the bottom line is we, our slogan is actually legal services made easy. Uh, even though we're a filing firm and not a law firm, but we're, we use the proprietary software written by a trademark attorney. And so that's why we're able to assist in this way, in the important ways, everything that's needed in order to get to the finish line, right? Which is right. the goal, which is registration. Right, right. Now, we, we talked a little bit about time. Um, you know, um, I don't like to create false expectations with people. Um, so I'm going to use this as my reference. <laughs> but when we, I know it, it's kind of different for everyone, but can, <laughs> I know, and you know, we, we said they're taking a long time right now due to the amount of businesses that's been started. So speaking in, ter in terms of time, like what, what would we say, you know, um, far as when someone comes in, they're excited, they're ready to start their business. And I know, you know, you mentioned we can, hey, say, hey, it's been filed. Here's a number within a few days. But what would you say on average for a company where things go smoothly, which we know is not always the case, mm -hmm. but what would you right. say the time it takes? The best case scenario. So, <laughs> so you know, before, uh, before 2020, we were seeing that trademarks were getting uh, registered many times <clears throat> excuse me, within uh, seven to eight months. But now we're seeing that, and it's also posted on the USPTO website, that it could be a bit longer. It could be 11 to 12 months. Okay. Um, if, if it's uh, very smooth and, uh, you know, it could possibly, you know, fall somewhere in between those, those time frames. Right. And, and that's very possible. Uh, but, you know, I would just say that, you know, I know that we're a microwave society, Jamila, and we like to have yeah. things yesterday. I, you know, we get yeah. that too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the, the bottom line and what somebody has to remember um, or keep, keep in their uh, sites is that once we get that serial number, you can start using the trademark. Our comprehensive search, which we, we generally run for most people, will be able to look at, you know, what's like a crystal ball, if you will, what's mm. in the pathway to registration before we get to that point. And then we can actually, even before we file it, um, just to back up a little bit, we can actually allow the customer to modify that trademark somewhat okay. based on those search results, right? Those comprehensive search results before mm. we do the filing, which I think is a great, um, you know, a great Absolutely. benefit for them Absolutely. to be able to do that. <clears throat> so that's one of the questions that just came in here on my end. Um, why would I, you know, get a comprehensive search? I think, um, <laughs> and for this particular customer, I, I know that one of the questions was like, do I need to get the search? I know I made this up. Could you tell us a little bit about the, your experience in dealing with, um, you know, people, you know, a lot of times we think that we are the first to create something or come up with it. Could you talk a little bit about that and how um, how beneficial that that search is? Sure. So so I, I believe that, you know, going along the lines of the person that just asked the question, you know, some people think, well, why would I have to pay for a comprehensive search when I can do a search on my own, whether it be right. Google or perhaps even at the USPTO itself? Well, again, going back to we've been in business, uh, the head of operations, our operations team has actually been here for 10 years. So, I mean, we actually have a, a, a solid track record of great searches, comprehensive searches. A person going in blind without a search at all is not recommended, but a person could do that. We can do that for them. But 
let's be honest, it could cost them a whole lot more money than if they mm-hmm. had done that comprehensive search on the front end. Exactly, exactly. And so it's it's really kind of doing your due diligence up front. And we're not just looking at potentially blocking marks. We're looking at, you know, if it's, uh, you know, possibly, again, using that proprietary software that we discussed, uh, you know, if it's merely descriptive, meaning mm-hmm. it, the trademark does what it says it's going, you know, based on the services, the goods and services, what it's going to do. Okay. Uh, that is actually something else we search in that comprehensive uh, and that could be a potentially uh, a substantive office action. So we want to know those things up front a lot of times, and that's just a good way to go about it, uh, to to not go in blind. And just right. like, you know, you wouldn't necessarily drive at night without your headlights on, right? You want to see what's exactly. ahead of you. Exactly. So we have another question come in. Um, what would they need to actually, what kind of information would we need to get started on uh, filing for a trademark for both a logo and for the name. Okay. And so it, I guess that does depend on the situation, if it's in use or not in use. Certainly if it's in use, it's a bit more comprehensive, right? Because we need to show examples of use. And many times people provide a screenshot, which we, you know, we explain once we talk to the, the customer uh, as well over the phone, We'll be able to go into those things, and it would, you know, it would need to show um, a correlation between the trademark, whether it be a word or design, in a so direct association with that goods and service that they want to protect it under, right? So, you know, it could be more than one class, perhaps, as far as goods and services. Those are the kind of things that we'll also kind of go over, be able to talk to the customer directly, right? And uh, you know, and be able to, to hash those things out. But the what as far as what they're going to need with a design, let's take it there first. With a design, it's a little different from the word because they're going to have to need, um, you know, a description of the design itself. Just like if you were explaining the design, Jamila, to me, I couldn't see your design, but you wanted to explain it in a sentence or two. What it right. what you know if it has a sunburst here or what have you, right? And so that's what is needed for the application for a logo. Uh, the logo could have words, as I mentioned, in it. Uh, it doesn't always have to, but the you know the first date of use. It could be the first date of use, you know, ever, or the first date of commercial use is really what they want to drill down on at the USPTO. Okay. And, and so. Um, I think another important point, and thank you uh, for the, the, the great question uh, from the uh, the person that asked it, is that we can actually file uh, under the individual's name. Mm-hmm. And I think tying in with what I mentioned before, as far as doing that before the LLC, we can mm-hmm. assign the trademark to the business whether it be an LLC or a corporation, right, or whatever it is, or a nonprofit for that matter, right. um, later in the game. So we can do that. So don't feel like, you know, that should slow down the process, right? We, I need the LLC or something first. No, you, you don't. And we can actually assign it to the entity down the road, you know, and that's something we do all the time. Excellent, excellent. So in terms, we have another question. <laughs> What was what's meant by first date of use um, and first date of commercial use? How do you differentiate that? Well, first date of use could be just when a person came up with the idea, right? Um, and then the first date of commercial use would have to be more along the lines of when they post it on a website or social media, mm. uh, and and really kind of some kind of time da- time stamp time stamp there to be able to show commercial use. Okay. All right. Right. And that could actually be on, you know, Amazon as well, or, or, you know, we have different situations, right. Where people are, some people sell on their Facebook page, some people sell on Instagram. Right. And so it just really depends. It's a very versatile uh, e-commerce global, you know, marketplace anymore. Right. Exactly, exactly. Um, so another question we had here is as far as people who sell um, on 
Airbnb who may not really use the web websites per se, but um, more print. If anything, how does that work for them? Or if there if there's a difference at all? Mm -hmm. Well, according to the USPTO, sometimes they do also accept marketing materials. If a person would send out marketing materials to somebody, like a PDF or a fly a brochure or a flyer, sometimes that's also something that that can be used. I mean the you know, that's why it's it's sometimes good, however, to to be able to you know, post it somewhere, whether it be on their own Facebook page or, or you know, wherever to be able to get that timestamp. But but we do submit, you know, um, flyers and marketing materials uh, for the uh, customer uh, to, to show commercial use. Okay. And yeah, so, sometimes you know they can be a bit more challenging, right? As like as in the example of Airbnb, uh, I imagine that they're going to have that listed somewhere, though, whether it be on Airbnb's site website or um, right or their uh, own some or kind of promotion, right? Somewhere, somewhere. Exactly, exactly, uh, exactly. And I know a lot of people do a lot of Airbnb marketing using um, the uh, Google or. Uh, social media, for instance, uh, a lot of Instagram, <laughs> uh, Airbnb people are on Instagram kind of posting. So that's good. Huge, to also right. Get yourself there. Right. Exactly. It's really huge there on Instagram. So I think that's one of another place that I think people can kind of hone in on and make sure yeah. that you're yeah. Yeah. Instagram it. works. It, yeah. It, it's something that's common that a lot of people do utilize. And that might be the only place that they can show commercial use and that and there's nothing wrong with that. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. That's um, a great question. What would be a piece of advice that you would give to someone who's coming up with um, a name or a logo, um, even just kind of getting started, but <laughs> heard the word trademark and got a little fearful of, you know, kind of tapping into that, going that direction? Well, that's getting a little bit into – I cannot give legal advice, but what I would say in a general sense is that mm -hmm. a person can come up with a name and, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the, in the search, it can be altered or modified before we do that filing. So they, I think that what you're getting at is really a good point. However, is that a fear of loss? What, what if I have nothing to work with here? Yeah. As a trademark company, we want somebody to have a, a, a trademark or a brand to work with. So we're we're flexible. We want somebody to win and succeed. So we're not here to nickel and dime people. That's not our our uh, mantra, right? That's not what we're all about. We want people to to be able to succeed. And and so I think that we we really want a long term business relationship, just like you know we'll hopefully have with you as well, and I'm sure we will, Jamil. Yeah. And we you know, we want to be long term partners and, and success. And and so, you know, you know that, oh yeah, I have a I have a guy or a gal that can help me, right? And and, mm -hmm. and, and with this. So, you know, you always feel like you're you have a, another team player in building your brand. And that's what we're really all about. So we're we're here to every situation is a bit unique. I would say a person that's a bit apprehensive, um, you know, just it's important not just to sit on it, right? You need to you need to, to move on it and to get started and go with your intuition, go with your go with your passion, follow your bliss, right? And so right. that's certainly something that we can we can help people with and, and if we need to modify it, so be it. I mean that's what life's all about, right? So we can help them <laughs> uh, with that before we can actually get the filing um, done for them. So I think that's a great benefit. I don't think a lot of companies let people change it up very much before the filing right. and with charging them extra money. So, I mean, if if that's what they want to do, we're able to do that for them. There's definitely flexibility. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm looking through some questions here. Here's a good one. Um, what, what would you <laughs> – so you're reading these questions here and at least some words out. But – what would you say is the best option now for a lot of people? And I don't know if this is kind of legal or not, but going okay. into NFTs and crypto now, like how does okay. that look 
or what are we looking at when it comes down to, you know, going into that world and <laughs> all the digital stuff now? Oh yeah, we we definitely help people in that in that space. Uh, you know, crypto's big, uh, NFT, and you know whether it be for you know security purposes, right, or crypto itself. We we certainly can help people in that way. Um, and you know, and a person, I guess, uh, it, you know, all these great questions actually inspire me to to come up with some other valuable information for the the the, pe- the listeners here. Is that a person doesn't have to be in use in order to file, right? It's it's sometimes better to even you know file it before you're actually in use if you come up with that name, if it's that important to you to be able to do so, and we can. We do, probably 50% of our customers are in use and 50% are not. So I also want to make that known that you don't have to be in use before you file your trademark. Awesome. Awesome. Now, this person came back with a, <laughs> another question uh, as far as in, NFTs are concerned. And I know, you know, what from what I know about NFTs, you know, it's a, you know, they kind of, they're kind of protected within where they're built. But um, would it be required to do a trademark on the creation of the characters that they're um, they're creating uh, for NFTs as well? Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, to be honest and, and fair to the person asking the question, I think that this is the kind of person that needs individualized attention. And I'm mm-hmm. just saying that with all due respect, that, that that individual would talk to, you know, call you and we could set up an appointment and, you know, go from there as well but you know there are possibilities for us to copyright versus trademark in this Mm -hmm. case so and and not only would it make it more economically feasible for the person to do that you know it because a trademark is more let's face it a lot more expensive than a copyright so we can we can actually discuss those those possibilities with with that individual Awesome, awesome. And we'll definitely be doing a, a copyright <laughs> podcast as well, because I think we're getting a lot of questions on uh, copyrights. And so I just want to put it out there. We will be back with a copyright uh, podcast soon, uh, so you guys can get your questions answered as well. Um, actually, look, we, we kind of went through this really quickly, and this is awesome. I think we covered most of the questions here. Um Brian, if you want to share some of the other things that would go with um, some of the, you know, the trademark services, some of the process that, you know, people can kind of expect, I think that would kind of, you know, help um, with them choosing, you know, which direction to go when it comes down to um, rebuttals. I know a lot of people don't really understand. They kind of look at it like um, it's an LLC. <laughs> when they file for a business, it's used, I usually don't contact them anymore. There's not it's not very often that they say, Hey, we're going to send this back and we need additional assistance or additional information. Um, And I know trademarks differ. Uh, Could you just give us a little more information about, you know, how that would be more of a challenge and why it's good to continue to work, you know, with us or, you know, on, in that matter. Sure. So I, I think that, you know, and please come back if I'm not addressing it entirely, but what, what I, I think I hear you saying is that, if if a person applies for the LLC, they just get started without thinking too much about the trademarks, and they you spend a lot of time, energy, um, and you know, and, and money uh, building a brand. Mm-hmm. And let's say that a person actually was doing very well after a couple of years, and then they all of a sudden, out of the blue, they get a cease and desist letter. Um, that's then that means a person has to start all over again, and then you know that brand name recognition just goes out the window, right? Where right. you've actually built another person's brand if you're in the same space. You know, you've done exactly. the work for that person. Um, that doesn't feel very good. So that, you know, I think that a person needs to, to, to explore all of these, all of these things sooner than later uh, and not put it on the back burner. I just think it's, it's, it's really important overall um, you know, for people to, to take a look at these things right from the start. Um, and as I mentioned, I, I mean, a person can file for the LLC or, or business formation at any point, but, you know, a person may want to actually explore if that's a business name that they can 
set themselves apart with nationwide right. if if that's their market, right? They have to analyze kind of what their market is, where they're going to be, you know, where where do they want to um, focus their efforts and build a book of business or or you know build their business overall. Is it going to be national? Is it going to be uh, regional? Is it going to be you know worldwide? Those are the questions they need to ask themselves. We oh and and just out of on another note, we can actually help people file internationally as well. Oh wow! Now that's a little bit, yeah, and that's a little bit different process. A lot of people do want to secure their U.S. trademark first, and we can peg that. Uh, trademark application to the international filing also. And for, you know, just to kind of not get into it too much, but, right. mm -hmm. you know, it would be done a la carte, like if it were Canada, for example, a lot of people want to focus in on the English speaking countries, right? Like the UK now is Brexit, right? So it would be right. separate from the EU. Uh, the Australia, um, Canada, uh, for example. So we can file those individually the EU is actually about 20 countries and that would be more of a a bargain I suppose you could say because it's it's one filing for all those countries hmm. but that tends to be you know a person sometimes thinks well let me just get an international trademark that's not possible you have to do it generally one by one with the exception of the EU in this hmm, case right so, so yeah but we can help them we can help them uh, build their brand build their brand globally as well. Okay, so one last question with that one. Um, when building your brand internationally and filing trademarks internationally, does that change the time that it takes um, to when filing? And I, I'm, I'm guessing what they're asking is, does it change the process time But uh, for them uh, to actually no. get there? Right. No. Right. Well, not necessarily. I mean, you know, it wouldn't necessarily slow down the U.S. application um, or prevent them from getting started, I guess, is what they're perhaps asking. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it looks like yeah I mean, I, I would say that, that it wouldn't necessarily, you know, if they get their U.S. application in and they can start showing commercial use, I mean, uh, and then we file the international application, it wouldn't really, you know, um, it change the time. Adversely, it wouldn't adversely affect it. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine that's they would that's be that's able to start showing use uh, regardless. Yeah. Yeah. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't throw a monkey wrench into the mix, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the worry when we start, we talk international. I think people want to do it, but they don't want to stop from, you know, that U.S. application from going. We all know it takes time anyway. So, yeah. It that's wouldn't right. Stop you, that's right. you should be fine. Um, Brian, is there anything else that you want to share? I mean, as far as services are, con you know, concerned, just to kind of put out there while we have listeners there <laughs> tuned in. I mean, they'll be able to reach out to me and my company and we'll be able to set something up with you guys. But what other services would you say, aside from trademark, because we're going to come back on and talk about many of them, but what would you say? I know we have copyrights next that's coming, you guys. So what right. would you say, uh, what else could we, you know, lean on you for? Well, so before we get into that, just to kind of tie it up and, and, and since, you know, in a neat little bow here. Um, so the, apart from our, our website, we actually have a special uh, package called the Enterprise, which, you know, J Jamila's uh, got and, and certainly, you know, well versed on as well. We created that because, you know, a person doesn't necessarily have to, you know, then, then they know that they're covered. They've got everything that they'll need from start to finish, right? Because we, it's hard to say what could happen down the road once they get their application in. They could require some additional information, and that could be uh, an office action response, which they'll have six months to respond to. And and that could be, as I mentioned, a little bit minor, procedural, or, or substantive, a little bit more complicated. So we can help them with that. That all-in-one package would include all of those things or to file the statement of use. If they're not mm -hmm. in commercial use, we can establish that later, right, to be able to show or file an extension. If they need a six-month extension, we can also file that for them. Excellent. So yeah. that enterprise package is really neat because it, it's not on our website, but it's something I created for um, 
for this type of purpose for for us to be able to help people in the best way possible so that they they know that they don't have to uh, worry about it it's it's all covered right and everything awesome. is, yes. is uh in that way so i think to also dovetail on what you asked um we do provisional patents and awesome. i know that we 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 don't have a lot of time to discuss that but we do. so provisional patents just in a nutshell uh, is something that holds and, and uh, protects their idea for a year. And it's not a full-fledged patent, which if they want to get a full-fledged patent, we would refer them out to a, 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 an IP attorney, which we can do. Um, but, you know, this is a cost-effective alternative to getting a full-fledged patent while they're doing market research or perhaps looking for investors you know, like in Shark Tank or, or something. Right. <laughs> like that. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what people do. And, and it's not thousands and thousands of dollars. A provisional patent is very affordable. And we can help people with that as well. So, so you know, again, that's, 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 that's important, I think, to some people's brain. If they have something unique enough to, to, to patent, we can do a provisional patent application for people as well. Excellent. And I think that's a lot of what we run into, um, people not understanding the the difference between provisional packaging, um, um, a patent as well, and then a trademark. Uh, a lot of times when people, you know, they're coming to me, they're getting started, and they're like, I want to get this trademark, but they don't know if it should be trademark, copywritten, or, you know, patent. Right. So um, if, I know we have about 15 minutes or so. So if, not, if it's not a burden, could you kind of define it, the difference between the three, just kind of some brief examples? Okay. So provisional patent perhaps may be something for, let's give a, a generic example that perhaps everybody's thought about. If, if a person lost their TV remote and they came up with a, uh, you know, a, perhaps like a location device for it, you know, right. and the old, uh, you know, uh, TV remote finder. So that would be, if they had something unique, obviously, that may be something that would be a candidate for a provisional patent. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, some kind of, and they would need drawings or that sort of, or a description as well, right? So right. generally that's something that's more concrete in, as opposed to a service, right? So the, but the, uh, copyright would be really for more of a logo and not a word. So if a person wanted to protect, or I guess, but let me let me rephrase that a little bit. So if a person had a song, we could help them copyright the song. They could mm -hmm. also do uh, a, a logo if that's the face, you know, of the company as well. But it wouldn't protect it. The limiting factor is it wouldn't protect it in a certain space of goods and services. So that's why most people go with the, the trademark, and that's where the trademark, you know, get, offers a little bit more protection in the goods and services space, right, well, whichever space that may be for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that was a big question. I think we got a lot of <laughs> thumbs up on that one. Um, I think that's a, a big challenge for people understanding if they should go with the trademark or the copyright. And you can definitely give us a call because what I don't know, I have Brian and he will make sure that we get the right answer um, right. To direction to go with that. Um Brian, is there anything else you want to share? Because I am going to share my information with everyone, if you don't already know me, um, and how you can get in touch with me to, you know, contact Brian or start with myself as well. Absolutely. So, so I, I think that, you know, what we're, we're looking at here is that, so if, most people do want to either have their own website and, and eventually sell on Amazon. That's why trademarks are so needed anymore. I, I don't know. I, I've heard of the new Walmart marketplace as well. I yeah. imagine that they may also require a trademark down the road. And, and I, mm -hmm. I know that they want to compete with the, ant, the Amazons of the world, the, ant, I guess right. not the Amazons of the world, but the Amazon itself. But that's, probably also another requirement there. So the, 
you know, that's something that we can help people with, uh, you know, and, and for artists, yeah, I mean, a copyright would be something that we could, if they have a, a, you know, a catalog of songs, I think that we can also, we're also a very friendly company in terms of we'll work them out a discount if, if it's a, a bunch of different things that they want to do, right? I mean, we certainly believe in in loyalty business and, and uh, be able to work something out for them that way. Excellent. Excellent. Now, um, one last, I keep saying one last question. So another question came in in regards to the trademark um, and submitting it for on the e-com side. It looks like they want to know uh, what would they show to prove that they have, you know, that they've already filed or, that they have, you know, that in process, aside from, I guess, the number, but I'm, I guess they're asking, they're not sure what Amazon or any of these e sites would ask for. So the, can you tell us what they ask for and what we would show on, in that manner? I really am not well versed in as far as Amazon policies because they're constantly changing and in flux. I, I don't know their latest policies. Um, so that's something I can't speak to. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do know that they need a trademark if a person wants a storefront, right, with Amazon. I think a person might be able to sell a product without having a storefront. But right. I believe that that's perhaps not the end goal. I mean, I imagine that e-commerce, you want to have some kind of storefront as well. Right. Um, so that and that's constantly changing. Uh, you know, it's just really an, a non, you know, ever changing uh, landscape with Amazon. So I, I can't speak necessarily speak to what they're they require um, right but I do know that you know our services are very uh, much needed in terms of what they're asking for for a storefront excellent mm -hmm. and of course you guys if you have any questions on that um, Brian and myself we're always available to be able to sit down with you you always go through me and I'll, I'll help you to research as best as possible and Brian as my resource to make sure that we're getting the best um, information for you to answer your question um, and provide, you know, any information that you need on that. So, uh, Brian, before we, we did it really good. I mean, we really hit the numbers here on time. <laughs> so awesome. Kudos Absolutely. to you. Um, if anyone is interested in getting started with a trademark, you have uh, questions about a trademark, uh, any anything re related to trademark, copyright, um, provisional patents, of course, you can contact me directly at my office, which is my biz consulting. I can be reached at 215-443. Um, I just forgot my own number. <laughs> What's our number, Khadija? I have to ask you. That's horrible. Khadija. You don't, you don't call yourself. Yes, you know, I don't call. call myself at all. It's so crazy. I have five numbers in front of me just in my own defense here. For the radio station. I don't want to give people that number. So the number to contact me is 215-443-1076. Okay, I had a, a brain um, stunt real quick. But you can contact me directly. You can email me. You can visit our website at www.mybizconsulting.net. Uh, book an appointment. I will get right back to you and set up some time. We can go over everything. Um, I can take your questions. Again, I have resources to reach out to. I can always reach out to Brian to confirm information um, or questions that you may have. So feel free to give me a call anytime. Uh, shoot me an email. Shoot me, you know, book an appointment, whatever you need there. And with that being said, Brian, do you have anything else to add before we go? No, I would just, you know, obviously, you know, let them know how they can get in touch with you and we'll be happy to go over things. And we do understand, you know, that everybody's situation is a bit unique and, and we certainly want to tailor it, you know, to, the, you know, to their particular needs. So um, it's their business is important to them. It's important to us. And, and you know, we, we want we want them to be able to, to, to know that and feel that. So, and, and they will. So I think that, you know, really um, we appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to help, you know, your, uh, your customers and for us to be able to, you know, build some great brands. Um, I, you know, I, kind of came up with the slogan um, myself 
that we don't necessarily use on our website, but building tomorrow's brands today, right? And so we're, we're we're building strong brands, um, and you got to start somewhere, right? I mean, look at the Apples and the Amazon started in a person their own garages, right? Yes. So you, yes. it's, it's it's great to be able to. I think what I love about my job the most is that we're talking with you know, entrepreneurs early in the game where they're excited and they're passionate about it. And it's, it's yeah. what they, you know, eat, eat, sleep and, and think about all times of the day. And, and that's, that's exciting. That's exciting yeah. to be able to help them with their, their baby. And so yeah, and, and that's, that's super yeah. exciting. And, and so much so here at Mondays Consulting, one of the things we do is we celebrate once we present you with your new, LLC or, you know, we get your trademark in, we're going to celebrate you. We're going to, you know, have a cake. I usually do cake or donuts to get you fat with me, but <laughs> we, we try to celebrate you and let you know that this is, you know, a lot of times I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, um, new business startups, they're not getting the support from the, their, you know, their immediate circle sometimes. And they, they need that, that feeling, that feeling that this is exciting. You're accomplishing something. You're going to the next step. So we are here to definitely make sure that you feel that way um, when you're working with us because we become a family, you become a part of our family and, you know, and our extended family. So, you know, it's just, it's about excitement. This is an exciting time for a lot of small businesses um, all around the world. Um, and we, we try to make sure that we're providing any and everything that you need um, I do a lot of the uh, research and post it on my website from anything from, you know, getting started on your LLC, your trademark, your, you know, step by step. If you look through my tabs on mybizconsulting.net, you'll be able to see everything that you need to kind of successfully get started. Um, so feel free definitely to give us a call, book an appointment. Um, it costs nothing for our free consultation, which is 20 minutes. You know, you can kind of give me a call, ask me anything that you want for 20 minutes, no charge, and um, we can kind of get you rolling and get you in the right direction. Right. Okay. There you go. Yeah, and we don't charge. We don't charge by the hour or bill by the hour either, since we're <laughs> a filing firm. So yeah, we we certainly um, like to answer everybody's questions and right. and make sure that they understand the process there's a lot of moving parts to it and we uh we certainly can appreciate you know that people want to be hands-on but we we have a lot of experience and and just leave you know leave it up to us to be able to help you uh, protect your brands excellent excellent well on that note brian thank you so much for joining us here in the streets radio where we broadcast this is my biz tv i am jamila lari we have brian wood on the line he is our trademark consultant he's the senior trademark consultant and he is amazing brian it was a pleasure having you on today Thank you for everybody that tuned in. We do appreciate your questions, comments, and hopefully your phone calls that are coming. So, on Brian, I'll talk to you on the flip side. I'm going to go ahead and shut everything down on this end. I want to thank everybody again for tuning in. And we'll see you when we post more about copyrights. Copyrights is next, you guys. The biggest requested. We will be doing something on copyrights to kind of give you guys more information, more details on that. And hopefully, Brian will join me again for provisional patents. Why not? Right, Brian? <laughs> Absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Excellent. Excellent. So I'm going to let you go. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone. Brian, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. You, valuable, valuable information. I hope everyone that tuned I uh, really got a lot out of this. Again, if you have questions on the back end, you can give us a call, 215-443-1076. Yes, I know my number now. All right, you guys, you have a wonderful day, and it's we will see fun. you Thanks, on Thanks for having You're me. You're welcome. Thank you.
Get more from your store with Acme's new Fresh Pass program and enjoy more services like unlimited free delivery on all of your grocery needs. More exclusive perks like 5% off every day on your favorite O organic or open nature items across the stores and more rewards that never expire. Get Acme's Fresh Pass to exclusive perks, unlimited free delivery and more. Start your 30-day free trial today. Visit acmemarkets.com slash Fresh Pass for program details. Service available in select areas. Now is the best time to start working at Amazon. They are offering sign-on bonuses up to $3,000 and hourly pay up to $22 per hour. You'll bring home a great weekly paycheck and many jobs come with benefits that start on your first day. That's higher pay, sign-on bonuses, benefits day one. And you'll be part of a safe and inclusive workplace ranked among the best in the world. Go to Amazon.com slash apply to start your job search today. Amazon is proud to be an equal opportunity employer.